This week on Titan. Four wheels digging, eight, nine hundred horsepower. People literally can die. Carl Renazetta is an absolute legend. Four wheels faster, always. Aluminum's gonna hold up under all the pressure. Trucks need to be strong enough not to break. It is total chaos. Our country was built on a foundation of American manufacturing. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. But today, we've seen millions of jobs lost and 100,000 manufacturing plants have been closed. Into the republic for which it stands. Join us as we take a stand for American manufacturing and fight to bring those jobs back home. One nation, one nation, one, one nation. nation. Under God, under God, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This industry is hidden from the general public, locked behind closed doors. Today, all of that changes. Every week on Titan, we're gonna show you great American companies that are manufacturing and doing it big right here in America. We're gonna teach advanced manufacturing techniques, and we're gonna clearly show you how to bring work back to our shores. It's time to put Americans back to work. Four wheels digging, eight, 900 horsepower. It's gonna get serious. It looks like poetry and motion. It's a beautiful thing to watch. Here comes Renazetter's gonna make a two for one. Man, how do you bet against Carl with nine wins already? Carl Renazetter with a huge lead now. That's what everybody loves about this race right there. It is total chaos. What a great race. Oh, 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 Drives up the side oh, oh, oh. on the outside. What an exciting. It is a beautiful day down here in Southern California. We're in Lake Forest and we're visiting the fabrication shop for Carl Renazetta. It's no surprise to see Carl Renazetta win the race. Carl is an absolute legend. He's won the Baja 1000 two times. He's won the off-road short course championships nine times with over 120 wins. I got a call from Bill Smith who needed some precision CNC machine parts to lighten up the truck, make it go faster, and give them a greater competitive advantage. Winning races takes talent, and it all starts in the garage. Let's go check out Team Renazetta getting the trucks ready for competition. Bill. Hi, I'm Bill Smith. I'm crew chief for Carl Renazetter. Been working with him on and off for about eight years now. How are you, man? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I got some CNC parts. Nice. We've been waiting on those. So you guys know who Carl Renazetter is, right? Yeah. He's pro he's two, pro four. Pro trucks. He like makes it happen. So this guy Bill is his crew chief, and Bill is building his truck for the Pro Four series. All right, and they need some parts. It's basically the casing, the outer shell for the differential. It was made out of steel. Now they're going to a 7075 aerospace grade aluminum. You know, these trucks, they blast off like 200 feet off these jumps. Like it's incredible. They land pinpoint, like when they're in the air, every pound matters. So we're gonna make some cool parts for some race trucks that do it big in the dirt, man. So what's good for you guys is that most of the work is being done in the lathe department today. It's about time you got us some work. Uh, what are you talking about, man? You guys are like pounding work every single day. We don't show any of that on the show. Oh, I know, but now you got some big boys. These are actually decent sized parts. So no mistakes. Parts have to be done next week. How many parts are there? There's three different parts. The two big ones that you see right there, one of each, okay? So make a set of piece and then make the real piece, all right? Just in case anything happens, okay? And then there's these little inserts that pop in each one of these holes right here, all right? I'll work on those two big ones and then I'll just have Travis work on the little inserts. And then we'll get it over to the mill department and then you guys can just do like the last operations 
get it in the Sean, get them all inspected, all dialed, and basically next week, I'm gonna shoot down to Southern California and get these things assembled, and it's race time. All right, guys, you ready? Yep. Boom, let's, let's do this. Uh, like peanuts to an elephant. Peanuts to an elephant, nice. So here we are. I've got the part loaded up in Autodesk Inventor. We're gonna start programming. These are front differential parts for Carl Renesetter. For his front differential on his 4x4 truck, all the work is done on the lathe with a little bit of mill work, so all the pressure lies with us. So as usual, I have a very short deadline on these parts, but I gotta get them done fast, and I have to get them done perfectly. So let me show the process on how we're gonna attack this thing. So first I'm gonna take a big drill to the center of the part. That way my face tool doesn't have to go as far down. And then I'm gonna face the part with the OD tool and I'm gonna start turning across the top. This is a big part with a smaller front OD so it's gonna be taking off a lot of material. There's a big mill feature on the back of the part so I need to make sure that I leave enough material that they can make out that shape on the back. It's got a big groove in the middle of the part so I'm planning on going in with a right-handed tool and a left-handed tool that have a steep enough angle that they're able to groove the part. So now we're gonna be doing the left-hand tool. It's the same exact tool as the right-handed tool that did all the OD work, except it's coming in from the opposite side. By doing it this way, I can run this part a lot faster and I don't need to use an actual groove tool to do it. So now I'm gonna use a boring tool and I'm gonna open up the hole that I put in earlier. Once this tool's done and it does the finish pass, you can take the part out and get it to Sean so we can start cranking on the second side. Next on Titan. That whole area that says launch zone. It has no engine. This front differential is always trying to climb out of the truck. The green flag, we're racing. Thanks for watching this free episode of Titans of CNC. If you love what we're doing, please subscribe to our YouTube channel below. And if you want to learn this trade for free, go to academy.titansofcnc.com and we'll learn it together and take it all to another level. Boom. Pro 4s, Pro 2s in the house, championships up for grab, nothing is settled, and it doesn't matter if you want to talk about Carl, there's only 46 points between him and Kyle now. Absolutely, and Kyle LeDuc has gone three wins in a row, he's the fastest qualifier, and the sun is setting on the season, but it is just starting to get sweet. He definitely has momentum on his side, we'll find out if he can keep the pressure on that man right there, Carl Renesetter. They are on the throttle early as they throw the green flag for racing. The leading pro for Carl Renazetter in the mix, about eight trucks back. We'll have to get the exact scoring. He has a little contact there. As Carl tries to make his way towards the front, there's a good look at the 99. Being down here on this track is amazing, but you're like, flying around these turns. Oh yeah. Going that's... over these crazy jumps. Yeah, so crazy jump, that's the biggest jump that we have in our race series. That whole area that says launch zone is about a 200 foot jump where we fly 200 about- 200 feet right 200 there. 200 feet from where you take off to where you land. And every time you hear me making the analogy, flying 25 feet in the air, yeah. landing after flying 200 feet into a corner side by side, right there. You can see where you land right into a corner. So you so can like imagine- So right when you land, you're just like, boom. Yeah, so you imagine the speed it takes to fly 200 feet through the air, probably 70, 75 miles an hour, coming right in, landing, sliding into that corner with uh, multiple trucks. Multiple people trucks. People in front of you, Crazy. people behind you. Coming down from Northern California to Southern Cal, where you guys are making things happen. Absolutely, this is where it happens. We do all the fabrication, build all of our own parts. Cool, man. So you got two trucks, you got a whole bunch of trucks right here. A whole bunch of trucks, some little bit older trucks, two-seater trucks, our current Pro 2, our current Pro 4. What exactly does that stand for? Yeah, the biggest difference is two-wheel drive Pro 2, four-wheel drive Pro 4. Okay. The rules are slightly different, but they're really the same type of vehicle, do the same thing, a lot of the specs are the same. Which one's faster? 
Four wheel. Four wheel. It's in the dirt, four wheels faster, awesome. always. So the trucks are all broken down. There's no engines. Like when is the last time these guys actually raced? Just 12 days ago. We okay. actually won the last Pro 2 race and the Pro 4 race. It was the second Both round races. of the season. Both races in the same day. That doesn't happen very often and uh, Carl's done it a few times. What's better, winning or losing? <laughs> Some people say like, oh, it's just racing, 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 but winning is all, everything, right? Well, you know, I mean, uh, the battle, the battles, what I enjoy the most, and yes, I would much rather win than lose. I would say, do do I do I want to win more? Or do I have a fear of losing more? Probably I have more of a fear of losing than wanting to win. But but it always, for me, comes down to the actual race, the battle. Some of the best races I've ever had, I didn't necessarily win. Carl's been doing it for a long time. Been doing this a long time. He's absolutely one of the best to ever get in a truck. Awesome. I've heard he's been sponsored by Lucas Oil for like 18 years or yeah, something. Yeah, his whole short course career has been with Lucas Oil on the side. And thus you see all these red, white, and blue trucks like all over the place, huh? And absolutely. Yeah, That's it's awesome. been a big part of his career and uh, I don't see that changing anytime soon. So you guys have been fabricating these trucks, lightening them up, keeping them strong. It's like, it's an art, right? It is, and that's the key. And that's why we need, you know, experts involved because if the sport keeps evolving, we need to be stronger, lighter, terms faster. Mm -hmm. uh, it's constant, everybody's doing it. If you're not, you're going backwards. We not only build everything ourselves, we design everything. And, you know, you imagine these trucks are 41 to 4,300 pounds, um, and they fly 25 feet in the air, 200 feet long, and they literally drop out of the sky. And we have to do that completely controlled in a race environment, um, you know, with a track that's between 40 and 60 feet wide. So, so we got to be precise. The trucks need to work, and they need to, to be strong enough not to break. And, and you know, heaven forbid we crash, they got to protect us too. I guess there could be good and bad drivers, but when you're on that level, everyone's pretty good. That's right. So it's true when they say the race is won in the garage, right? Absolutely, you know, you have to have the best of the best drivers, you know, yeah. against each other, and you have to have the best equipment out there to make that happen. Absolutely, I saw this one race where Carl was like, came off this jump and landed, and another truck literally landed on top of yeah, him. Yeah, it gets crazy. Flipped over and like the truck didn't even look like it had a scratch on it. Yeah, it's crazy the durability these trucks have to have because our sport is rough. It's a lot like, you know, football. It's a contact mm -hmm. sport and there's gonna be contact. We, we live with that. That's the drivers, awesome. I think, look forward to that. Yeah. And we gotta keep everybody safe doing that's, it, of course. That's cool. I look at CNC parts and I'm like, that's my workmanship. You watch big old trucks slam down onto your truck and say, that's my workmanship right there, right? Absolutely, and we do the so same good. as fabricators, that's absolutely. Awesome. So show me where these parts go. Yeah, yeah, come on over. And this is our Pro 4, four-wheel drive, 900 horsepower. This is fastest class, fastest 900 truck. horsepower. They're animals, they're absolute beast, and uh, you know, every part on this has to be designed and engineered to take all that punishment that the 900 horsepower going through the drivetrain dishes out. I mean, it, it's pretty tremendous when you, when you see our sport. My name is uh, Tommy Orduno. I've been with uh, American Flyer Racing, which is Team Renazetta, for 16 years now. Everything that's done every race, we try to get things more better, more faster, better drivetrain programs, just a better chassis overall. So you guys build the entire truck right here. That's right. We just start with 4130 tubing and, and some plates, okay. and uh, we get it right off the rack as just long sticks of tube, and we turn it into this. So you said you actually just won a race with this truck. It has no engine. That's right. We had to go out and go back to let the engine builder hopefully do a little upgrade for us, something okay. he wanted to try, and get it back and maybe have that little bit more horsepower than the next guy. So every race, you're just trying to get a little bit faster. That's right. A little right. bit faster. How has the sport, like, changed? Right. In his 18 years of short course racing, it's basically been a slow evolution. Okay. The tires have gotten better. The shocks have gotten better. Everything about it, the engines make more power now. The jumps, um, jumps go higher. Absolutely. You know, they want the tracks to be, how do you say, more appealing to everyone. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, they, everything gets bigger, right? Yeah. And, uh, and somehow we have to make it live through all that. Durability is, is maybe the most important. And uh, so, you know, when it's a quality part, you know the durability is going to be there. Next on Titan. Chris is working on it right now. It was almost too easy. Going at it with Carl Renazetta. That's got to see these parts. Tyson just had an issue. And look at the craziness in there. <laughs> There's a fair amount of it. That's what everybody loves about this race right there. It is total chaos. We saw Carl Renazetta rotate nicely and get a good drive off the turn. Now driving underneath Doug Mattag. 
takes over fifth place, and he's our first Pro 4 truck on board with Showtime. When you're coming off a 200-foot jump, I mean, sometimes like you're slamming, right? Oh yeah, there's uh, we have um, shocks that are about three inch in diameter, mm -hmm. um, about this long, and uh, they're tuned so that they'll take those hits. But when you're in a race and you're trying to get ahead of the guy in front of you, you know that, I mean, you use everything you got. We flip the part around, so all that's left is to bring the part to length and just to clean up the backside and we can give this off to the mill. So we're gonna do some multiple face passes to get the part to its overall length. And now it's gonna do the front step. And it's gonna do the outside diameter for the mill profile. And now we're gonna open up what's left of the ID bore. There's not a whole lot left since we did most of the work on the first side. We have a couple of tight bores that we have to hold here. And the part's done. I'm very happy about how the part ran. Came out beautiful and I'm sure it's gonna go through inspection quickly and it's gonna get over to Chris. All right, so that went really well. We got the part over to Sean. He's gonna do a quick manual inspection on the granite plate and make sure everything's okay so he can get it to Chris and he can run his mill off. We're halfway there, now let's go work on the next part. So we got the first part signed off. Chris is working on it right now. It was almost too easy. So now we're moving on to the outer differential housing. Once again, I've got the part loaded up in Autodesk Inventor. It's the best way to take a block of material to turn it into a part. We gotta get this part done fast. We have another operation to do after this and the part's gotta ship out soon. So let's get on it. I'm gonna start drilling first again. Same reason, so the face tool doesn't have to go down as far. I'm gonna start running the face tool and then we're gonna turn across the OD again. A nice heavy cut so the chips break off really nice. So my son Tyson just had an issue over on the machine behind me. He was running one of the parts for Carl Renazetter. And when he started attacking it, the part actually moved in the truck. On this one, I asked him not to use the coolant because I wanted to show the viewers, you guys out there, exactly how the lathe works. In this particular case, the jaws, they were holding the part. The pressure locking it down was not high enough. And then without using coolant, when the cutter came across, it just pulled it. A lot of people ask me, why is it such a big deal in running fast? And I'm like, fast is everything. Time is money. If you take a part that takes 30 minutes to cut and you can drop it to 15, that's a cheaper product that's going outside the door. But then people ask me and they're like, well, why isn't everybody doing it? The answer to that is not everybody's seen it. Sometimes you have to see speed to believe in speed. Also, these machines are $100,000, $200,000, some of them even more. And if you make a simple mistake, like putting a decimal in the wrong place, like five point instead of 0.5, you will crash that machine instantly, causing five, six, $10,000 worth of damage like that. There's no insurance on the machine, that money comes out of your pocket, your machine is down, everything stops, and that's why people are timid to run their machines aggressively. But what I'm trying to say is, the new technology, the new machines, allows you to catch mistakes quicker. The tools, the machines, everything's better. What used to fail back in the day does not fail today. So we need to run aggressive, we need to double check everything, 
and we need to constantly improve our programs so we can be productive and efficient, giving our customers a product that is not only of a high quality, but at a low price so we can keep the jobs right here in America. Tyson's fixing everything right now. He's gonna be back online. We're gonna make it happen. Next on Titan. Lighter, stronger, make us faster. Man, what a long day. I'm trying to win races and championships. Some things we can't show you. And Renna Zetter using that four wheel drive. Go to the bottom of the track, rotate, and out pull these two wheel drives. And McGrath did a good job fending him off, although I don't think it's going to last very long. These fours are so quick. And there it is, Renazetter past McGrath. That is Bill Smith spotting for Carl Renazetter, team manager for him. Now Kyle LeDuc going at it with Carl Renazetter. That's Kyle in the 99 Monster Energy Toyota Tire sponsored all black truck. He's making the move towards the front with Carl. Only a couple trucks, trucks in the two wheel drive category left in front of these two four wheel drives. This big turn right here, and I see the trucks, and they're just like, bah! It's kind of like drifting on dirt. Uh, yeah, you know, it definitely is, uh, and, it, and it depends whether you're in a Pro 2 or a Pro 4. You know, Pro 2, you're going you're gonna to set up your turns definitely a little different. You're going to look for that cushion, try and find that bite. Pro 4, you have a lot more options because you have that, that extra track attractive effort so you can run the cushion you can stay down low you can split the difference you can move move the truck around a lot more but yeah you're definitely throw backing into these just like coming all the all the way around you can't run something that's not legit because you're trying to win races and championships that's right, right. it has to be top quality every part on this truck has to be top quality or it doesn't need to be there because one one slip up one small part failure you're, you're parked watching everybody else race. So building a truck like this from scratch, like from the moment you start grabbing the pipe, how long does it take? About six months on the average, I would say. You can okay. definitely do it sooner. You can definitely do it quicker, throw more manpower at it, work more hours each week, you know, that sort of thing. But it takes about six months from start to finish when you start thinking of how you're gonna lay out all the suspension and engine placement, all the other things. The trucks themselves have gotten lighter, stronger, faster. And we all have to keep up with that and keep up with the times because every truck out there is trying to do the same. And that's where we, you know, we, we got involved in, and talked to Titan about getting us a part that's lighter, stronger, make us faster. There's not another one like it, right? That's right. Every truck's unique and we all have our own ideas of what we think will be faster next year or at the next race. And so each truck literally is very, very unique. There's very few components that interchange other than maybe some transmission or an alternator or starter. Uh, most components are custom built for this truck. Okay. Do you source all American made? Absolutely. It's all this 4130 chromoly is made here in the USA. We buy it right here locally in California and it just it's one of the better materials to build your chassis out of. It's strong, safe, durable. And you got the American workforce working all around us. Absolutely. Making an American made custom race truck that wins all, all the, time. the time. That's awesome. I love it. Oh, so good. You're the crew chief. You got Carl, he's the racer. There's only one racer, right? One team. And I see a bunch of guys working. The guys here, we just love what we do and we do whatever it takes to, to get it done, to get it ready to go win races. Well, our goal is to make one improvement between every round of racing, no matter what that is. And it could be in just the tuning aspect, making the truck lighter, making a part more durable. These are all the things we try to do each and every race. What a great job. I heard them earlier, just like messing with each other and stuff, but you can tell they take a lot of pride. And my name is Willem Vustin. I'm 23 years old. Uh, my job here with Carl is prepping the trucks, uh, some fabrication. Um, Still young, so I'm still learning. And it's really like Carl's safety is at stake, right? Oh, absolutely, you for know? sure. You've seen as you talk about trucks absolutely. landing on each other, and these these things do happen, unfortunately. And uh, you know, we have to keep him safe. He is the key component of this team and the trucks themselves, and uh, we have to keep him healthy. Yeah, and, and thinking about that, when you think about the welds and you think about the material and, you know, any suspect material from a foreign country that can't be regulated, you don't want your driver, your family member, right, in a truck to build out of garbage, right? That's right. You have to remember this. there's a human element to all this, yeah. both in our side and, of course, we have somebody in there that uh, literally can be going off a jump at 100 miles an hour, and if something goes wrong, be it another contact with another vehicle yeah. or whatever it is, 
he's got to be safe. He's got to have a confidence to know that no matter what goes wrong, he's going to be safe in there or he can't drive at 100%. You got to be a good loser to be a good winner, they say, but I tell you what, man, when you work this hard, winning is what it's all about. Got to see these parts you build for. She said they're going to be lighter, stronger. Can't wait to put them in our differential. You guys designed them. All I know is I made them perfect, all right? Well, that's team what we team want. Titan came through. That's what we want. All right, all right. You know, only the best for the best. That's what racing's about. Uh, so what about this one? This looks pretty normal, and yet I can see it's not. Yeah, well, this is Carl's first pre-runner, and it's what I call a working pre-runner. It's on the Baja 1000 pre-runs, Baja 500, Mint 400. It's been all over the place. It's what, like I said, it's a working pre-runner. Really? So this is this has had its uh, share of races, time in the dirt? Lots of time in the dirt. This probably has more time on it than most trophy trucks do. Really? That's awesome. So like the long races, right? That's right. That's right, endurance racing. Endurance, that's amazing. Next on Titan. Right, two of the very best as oh. Fitch goes to the front. Here comes Renna's out of We had a little bit of a scare there. Big enough hammer, anything fits. Yeah, how about Carl Renazetter and, of course, Kyle LeDuc, both of those guys winning championships in this series in the Pro 4s. So for the Pro 2s, they no doubt are in trouble. Two of the absolute best of all time are getting ready to put them in the crosshairs. Right, two of the very best as oh. Fitch goes to the front. Here comes Renazetter is going to make a two for one. Beautiful job for Eric Fitch. What a nice pass. Renazetter is by, and here comes LeDuc. If you don't understand racing, like to me, like I'm thinking it's all four-wheel drive, but two-wheel drive, the Pro 2s, is a big deal, huh? Yeah, you got to think about the fact that we have 900 horsepower mm -hmm. and about 650 foot-pounds of torque coming into two wheels in the in the rear on a on a surface that's continually changing from mud to wet to dry slick so traction is a big deal so we had a little bit of a scare there but everything came out all right no damage on it and we were able to finish off the part once again it's a very big part there's a lot of work that's going on here because of the differences in ODs Now I'm gonna bore out the ID, which stands for internal diameter. OD is outside diameter. Now we're gonna do a light finish pass across the part to make the surfaces look nice, and then we can turn it into inspection. able to flip it around and go to the next side. So once again, we're gonna do some face passes to bring it to length. Now we're gonna turn across the OD, outside diameter. There's no mill profile on this part, so we're just gonna bring it right to size. Now we're gonna finish the back side of the ID. Internal diameter, not too much work going on. Now we're going to do one final finish pass on the OD and ID. And we're ready to get this part over to the mill department. Man, what a long day. There was a little bit of drama, a lot of frustration. But in the end, the team came together and we got the part done. Okay. The part's in inspection. John's running a CMM, making sure the whole location's perfect. I'm pretty confident in it though, so I'm having them set up on the next job. So it looks like all my threads, depths, and diameters checked out great. The part looks beautiful. All that we have got left is going to the races. Tyson. Hey, what's up? How's it going, man? It's going all right. Everything good? Yep. I got those parts done. Which parts? The truck parts. Oh, Carl Renner? Yeah, they're in shipping. Ooh, you guys like made those things quick. Yeah, got the little inserts done. Travis finished them. They press right in, and Dana awesome. stuff went Dana, good. Dana, Chris made it happen. Yep. 
Ooh, man, I'm so proud of you. Mmm. Oh, like father, like son. That's Make right. it happen, right? Yep. CNC machining. Boom. American made. <laughs> Boom. I love it, man. All right, I'll see you in a little bit. Yeah, I'll see you later. Next on Titan. We're gonna need a little bit more persuasion. People literally can die. Aluminum's gonna hold up under all the pressure. We'll see if he gets to go across the stripe as the leader. There goes Ampudi getting tangled up, but Renazetter is by, and here comes Leduc. Best of luck to him here. He has a dogfight on his hands if he's gonna try to win this thing. Wow. Kyle landing on that back bumper. Here's a look at Kyle going around the outside on Fitch. Man, I think he isn't going for it on the mat. When I'm driving down, the car kind of feels like an extension of my own body. So you've been doing this for 20 years. So when you're up in the air, it's really like part of you that you're just, you don't even think about it. You just make those adjustments. You just feel it. It's all natural now. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it sounds kind of corny, but I call it a little bit of the force. You know, you, you absolutely feel these sensories coming through your body, your seat, you know, uh, primarily a little bit of the steering wheel because what you're, all you really have in there is, is your steering wheel and your brakes and your, and your throttle when you, mm. when you think about it, right? So. But there's so much that happens between all those things when they relate to each other and, and what you feel. So it's kind of hard to explain. I don't really think about it that much. Yeah, I just yeah, kind of yeah. do it, you know? Oh, man. I love when a plan comes together. Last week, I got a call from Team Renazetter and they needed some very critical parts in a hurry. A week later, I step out of my office, I see my son and he's like, Dad, the parts are done and they're beautiful. They're in shipping and boom, just like that. American manufacturing happening right here at Titan America by Team Titan. We got a cool part right here, my son Tyson. He did the first operation, the second operation. We gave it to my other son, Chris, who cut out some soft jaws, locked this baby like this, nailed those holes, milled all around here and cutting this flange, this profile, completing this part. It looks absolutely beautiful. Got checked off by Sean, ready to go, one down. And then we have the big boy right here, 7075 aerospace grade aluminum. My son Tyson almost had a heart attack machining this guy because his pressure on his truck was too low. It almost came out crashing the machine, but it didn't happen. He caught it just in the nick of time. My son did the first operation, the second operation. It looks like a mirror. It's absolutely beautiful. We gave it to Dana. He cut some soft jaws, cut the exact diameter to hold this part right here. First, he came in with an end mill. The inside had to be within tents because we had a little sleeve that just locks perfectly into the part. And then he came in with a drill and he drilled all the holes. Dana also drilled and tapped threaded some 5 16 18 holes. The part is stunning. It looks absolutely beautiful. Not only do these parts look flawless, but I know they are flawless. Sean put each part on the CMM. He probed it, made sure everything was absolutely perfect to the solid model. And that gives me confidence to say that these parts are perfect because I believe in my guys. I'm gonna box them up, and I'm going to Southern California. Team Renazetter blasting off crazy jumps. It's about to go down right now. So let's see these parts. Oh. How are you, man? Titan. Good. Titan, nice to meet you. Uh, you must be the mad scientist behind the scenes. Name's Ken Stallman. Uh, I've worked with Carl Renazetter for almost six years now, kind of the shop manager during day-to-day -day operations. So here's the parts. So you're going to be assembling them, make sure everything fits good. Wow. Thank you so much for getting this done. These look Absolutely. amazing. So this is what you guys have been running thus far, huh? Yeah, this is our, our current center section outer uh, made of steel, obviously. Going to the aluminum one's just going to be a, a huge advantage to us, uh, not only in overall weight, but in rotating mass. The Pro 4 that we're running this year that we ran at Phoenix had a few growing pains, so we're going to be making some changes. We're looking for a little bit of weight savings overall in the truck, and that front differential part's actually a really key part of that. 
We had a prototype that we ran and it was holding up, so I'm sure with your uh, superior CNC part. And it's aerospace grade aluminum, so. 7075 aluminum, yep. this is gonna be awesome. And I got all the little pieces right here. Just oh, slide good. in. Good, good, all our, uh, all our little fits. reducers. Yep. Awesome. Whether we won, whether we broke, whether we lost, I know I gave it 100%. And when we do win, there's nothing better than seeing that truck that I built with my bare hands from nothing, literally from a flat plate and some straight pieces of tubing into a race winning vehicle. That satisfaction is immeasurable to me. All right, we got our, our Titan machine piece here. We're gonna go ahead and assemble this complete so we can put it in the differential housing, get this in the truck, go racing. Gonna put a couple of guide pins in here. This is gonna help us to get our inner races in, get them in straight. This is a map gas torch. We're actually gonna grow this part slightly. All right, follow me. So these are our inner races. This is what our differentials actually ride on on the inside. They've been in the freezer overnight. Hopefully they're gonna slide in here. The reason we cool the inner part and warm the outer part is because the heat expands the metal and the cold contracts it. So what would normally not easily fit together at room temperature for both parts goes together much more easily. All right. Now we're gonna walk this over to the press. We're gonna need a little bit more persuasion. We wanna make sure it goes in nice and square. Next on Titan. Kyle has control of the bottom of the track. Thing looks like it fits just great. Big jump like this. He yeah. building right here in America. Battle for the lead on the back. Kyle has control of the bottom of the track. Kyle gets the spot. You can see the spotter for Kyle, Richard Holmes there, telling him exactly where Carl is. Both of these guys with two Lucas Oil Challenge Cup wins. And right now, it looks like Kyle's gonna have the advantage, but this one isn't over yet. <laughs> it's far from over. Yeah, so you can see this, this face of this jump isn't, isn't perfect. There's little, mm -hmm. little things, you know, holes, or, you know, you can see the lip right there. There's, there's a little bit of a divot there. So, you know, you gotta pay attention to all this stuff when you're, and how your truck is set up to be able to commit to such a big jump like this. Yeah, this is, and what about like when you're coming up, like do you ever get bumped and just tweaked like? Yeah, that's kind of like the, the, you know, gentleman's rule in our racing. You never want to hit somebody on the face of a jump because you're going to send them for a ride. Yeah. If I'm it sure. happens in the rare occasion. Somebody's out of control. Yeah, it's, it's an accident. You, you definitely can hurt somebody that way. Exactly. If you come in, yeah, people, people literally can die going oh, yeah. off the wrong end of this thing. Whew. Yeah, that's about the worst crash you can have is getting out of shape off a big jump like this yeah. and then snap rolling. And I've seen those happen before. Fortunately for me, knock on wood, I haven't, I haven't done that uh, on a jump like this, but uh, that would not be good. So there you go. These are we have our inner races in our outer part. Everything looks like it fits just great. Back to the kitchen. It's hot. Here's our ring gear that has been baking at 400 degrees for a while. If all goes well. That's exactly what we want to happen. The other thing Titan made for us is these little bushings. Because we're running aluminum housing with a steel, hardened steel bolt, we need something to protect the aluminum from galling and wear, and because of the torque that's applied to this. So this piece, you'll see once it goes inside, you won't be able to see it. This is actually gonna screw in and land in here, and that'll be what this all rotates on. So, roll the piece into the front diff. Now you can see, as we rotate the, uh, the yoke, attach the pinion gear, we're spinning the, uh, the axle drive, the front drive gear, 
and this housing right here that houses all of our uh, differential setup. All right, so now we're gonna put the uh, torsion tube on. What this does is from the factory differential that has a long tube on here, shortens it up because we run these differentials more centered in the truck than a factory truck would be. This is what carries our bearing support for our uh, passenger side axle. And it also becomes part of the mounting system for the front differential. Because of the amount of horsepower in these trucks, this front differential is essentially always trying to climb out of the truck. So here's our completed differential unit. This is ready to go into the truck. Some of the more uh, uh, hip viewers might have noticed I skipped a few steps with a differential assembly, but some things we can't show you. I honestly wish it was encouraged a little more to work with your hands, be it a contractor, um, a fabricator like I am. Anybody that's doing creative labor uh, is important to America in general as an economy, as well as uh, reclaiming the, our manufacturing. So here's the finished product, man. Titan, I can't thank you enough. This thing mm. fit perfectly. Absolutely Everything went perfect. right together. So good. This Actually, my, my team back home, they made it happen. Well, it's yeah. just like our team here. It takes everybody. Well, let's All get right. this thing on the truck. Let's go put it in. Cool. Need help with that? Nope. You're good? Man, this thing's so much lighter. Oh. 7075 aluminum. Next on Titan. Light as a feather. Ha <laughs> ha, come on. Man. But this is the story right here. This is where Carl goes for it. Carl Renazetter now in second place and going for a win. This is Carl Renazetter. The guy is bad. He's not laying up. Yeah. That's how you flick one in. And here comes Carl Renazetter. Renazetter on the back bumper. He is absolutely not points racing. It's elbows up, it's fight time, like you said. But this is the story right here. This is where Carl goes for it. So Carl, you've been short course racing for 20 years. Did you start racing as a young child? Like I did, I mean, you know, in, in, in the old days, there, there wasn't as many race organizations and opportunities, so we would build uh, jumps and make racetracks out in front of the house with our bicycles, and that was even before BMX really started taking off. And then, uh, you know, got into motorcycles and then started racing desert and then just kind of evolved into the short course. I, I like the short course because I like the the opportunity to race door to door, you know? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And just, let it hang out, strategy. When you're on the Baja like 1000, that's like that's like That's right? like an epic adventure, you know? And uh, that's a endurance race. Mm -hmm. This is all the sprint. This is like the 100 meter dash, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's almost like MMA compared to boxing. It, 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 like it is, I mean, right it's, it's, it's very aggressive, uh, it's quick, it's fast, it's exciting. Light as a feather. Here it is, yeah, Bill. Nice. I actually can't believe how much lighter this thing is. Let's get it put in. All right, let me jump up there. You can hand it to me. Wow, that went pretty quick. So how was the assembly? Well, big enough hammer, anything fits. Ha <laughs> ha, come on, man. Pretty close to flawless, man. Slides right in. All right, just a few more bolts, get some mounts in this thing, and we'll be all set. Ready to go, ready for racing. Can't wait to watch it on Mav TV, like blowing down the dirt track, and uh, our parts are on your truck, so it's an honor. So thank you so much. See you in the winter, sir. All right, yes. Thanks, Thanks brother. Again, Titan. Oh, great meeting you, man. Keep yeah. building, right here in America, making Absolutely. it happen. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> This is where Carl goes for it, man. He loves this oh, move right here. Drifting. Here it comes. He straightens it out and gets a run down the bottom. A little bit of contact. That is a good pass, and Kyle right back on it. More contact. This is the last lap of racing, so I expect there's going to be more and more pushing as we get to the final turns. And these guys are just absolutely fighting for this last win. And here comes Kyle right back at him on the inside. Going underneath now. Here's where Carl set Kyle up. Let's see if Kyle can do the same. Look at the run that he has, but he's gonna have to shift to the bottom and Carl is there. What a great race! Oh, 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 Drives up the side on the outside. What an exciting last couple of laps. What a show between two talented drivers. 
Hey, Titan, where are my parts? <laughs> Hope you're on your way. Can I say that on camera? Ken, he's our uh, lead on the uh, Pro 4. Let's Good. try that again. Do I get to go and show him how to drive his truck? They've told me when the foam party is, where the disco is tonight, and nobody's made me a cocktail. Table dancing, bar mitzvahs, quinceaneras, if anybody's interested, no. <laughs> okay. Run! Don't drop the camera. What do I do with my hands? <laughs>